Today, brethren, I'm coming to you with a very, very important message. I want to talk to you about the things that we've been going through, the things that are happening to us, and at the same time, I want to talk to you about what the scripture says about us. I want to talk to you about the spirit in man. But before I do all of that, let me put myself in the presence of our God and let him judge me to see if I'm wrong in any way. It says here, judge me, O Lord, for I've walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart for thy loving kindness before thine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with assemblers. I have hated a congregation of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I come past an altar, O Lord, that I will publish the poets of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity, redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place, and in the congregation will I bless the Lord. Salah, Salah. Now that I put myself before my God for his judgment, and before I go into my lesson that I wanted to do today, allow me to say a few words. Once you have crossed over from the slave mentality, once you've crossed over from the slave master's influence, once you have removed yourself uh, from serving that Italian image that the slave master gave us to replace the real and original Jesus, once you have freed yourself from all this abomination, please feel free to listen to me. This is not a black thing. It's a much more serious thing. But once you have crossed over, let us think about what is written in the Israelite doctrine in Romans 11. If we, the children, the children are indeed the root and the foundation of every man's philosophy, why are we not prepared to play the role that the God of Israel as prepared for us. You might wonder, of course, you might wonder, what am I talking about? Look around you and see what is happening to our people. Take a good look and feast your eyes on your television, in your social media, and in your news. Feast your eyes on the feebleness and as we display all the weakness and feebleness to others, I am asking you and telling you at the same time, don't you think it is time that all of God's children speak with one voice and show the unity that was lacking since we were in the belly of that slave ship, we were together then. We found no fault in our kinship, no matter what. We felt, we felt each other's pain. We wiped each other's eyes. Yes, we felt the source of their tears. Now we seem to be looking away while the other philosophies still have their knees on our necks, and we are doing nothing about turning to the God. We have been doing nothing but turning to the God 
for help. We are prepared. We are prepared to serve a stepfather. Than our own, who brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. What we are doing now is worse than worshiping a golden calf. We are turning to the dead and the gods of others. Should we not say never again like others and show the oneness? I'm not asking or telling you I want for you to join the Israelite nation worldwide ministry. But if you want to, feel free. We welcome all that believe in our God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But today is not about that. What I'm trying to say is we are never in spiritual agreement after slavery. We never agreed on anything spiritual. We have become more divided and spiritually separated in spirit because Christianity has done a remarkable job in removing our togetherness and giving us their God and their culture that we love so much now. What I will want for us to agree on once you are no longer in the slave master's philosophy and realize that you have a little knowledge of yourself, then join me and the rest of us in finding and forming a political body because the spiritual aspect never works. Finding a spiritual body that will enable us to rebut all the negatives that we are now enduring and to find what was missing even after this 400 years. Others are complaining while well, we spent centuries. We spent centuries in the mess and mire. I have declared a decree that none of my priests, ministers, elders, or officers anywhere around the world should never criticize any other group that call themselves Israelites regardless of any differences between us. A time for togetherness is now. I know we are not so much of a political strength, but we can. If and when we use it correctly, it can work. Some use money and corporate influence, but we can use our own political togetherness. Take your memory back to Alabama, or take a look on our togetherness and political movement that almost brought the bus companies to a halt because we did not ride on their buses. My dear friends, wherever you are around the world, the time is right for us. The time is so right for us to have a political umbrella that will represent all of us, wherever we are. Others are doing it and trying to keep our faces in the corner as we are the, their children. I can't understand we still stand for that. Others are doing it and trying to keep our faces in the corner as if we are their children. Others are almost telling us, praise their superiority. Praise it, because they are more powerful than us. So we should praise them. Let us stop crying, or let our tears be our strength for tomorrow's joy. Stop complaining and still remaining docile. Let us learn to stand on our own two feet. Let us stand again and look the world straight in the eye without bowing our heads. That political umbrella is needed right now. We should be able to set a date for the first meeting when I begin to receive your email of concern. Whether you are in Europe, America, 
in Caribbean, Brazil, Guyana, or anywhere else in the world, use our email. And somewhere we'll get back to you. Let us become a one people once again. Do you have any idea? Any idea at all? If we get together from around the world and speak with one voice, do you know how powerful that would be? The time is now, my friends. They don't want this to happen, but we must let it happen. The stay of the tribes might even come back home. We have suffered for centuries more than any other people, more than any race of people, more than any nation, and still remain quiet and still fighting each other. Millions of our fathers have been thrown overboard and made food for the sharks. Our babies were food for the crocodiles. And just like the Pharaoh ordered in the days of our father Moses to kill all Israelite boys, but today we have survived. Some of us have survived. We have survived their brutality and their wickedness. Let us now put on the arm of our God and look out for each other. Do not allow others to tell us what to do anymore. This is a spiritual battle, my friend. And we can't win if we are divided. And we can't win with physical weapons. The spiritual strength of our togetherness is what is needed against the principalities and their power. My people take a good look at our world and see who are together and watch their strength. And look and see who are this in disunity and see their weakness. Let all Israelites live. I say that because my spirit was bothering so much. And I woke up this morning after lack of sleep and thinking about my people. What else? And then the spirit allowed me to find this gospel in Ezekiel. And I'm going to read a little bit for you. It says, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, Eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the children of Israel. It is not a literal statement that you eat the roll. Put it inside of you. Put what is written in that roll, put it inside of you and teach and speak to your brothers and your sisters. So I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house and speak with my words, speak with my words unto them. This is what I'm trying to do. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange language or a strange peace and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Let us speak the language that we all speak every day. So it would not be strange or be in a hard language. Not the many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto me. They would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent, and hard-hearted. Hard Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads, as an adamant harder than flint. Have I made thy forehead? Fear them not, 
now to be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and heard, and heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from this place. I heard all the noise of the wings of the, of the, the, thick, the living creatures that touched me, and they touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of a great rushing. I heard that. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness and heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv, and dwelt by the river of Chebar, and I sat where they sat, and remained there astonished among them seven days. It's all a spiritual thing that we must look at. It is not the body. That is the lesson that I was prepared to give to you today. Before I go into my lesson again, I just want for you to understand why I am standing here today. The world is corrupt and it looks like everyone's back is toward us. And everyone's face is looking at us with disgust. Everyone is telling us what to do. Everyone seems to have an answer to our problems by giving us their God and teaching us their culture. In 1 Samuel the seventh, and Samuel speak, the third verse, and Samuel speak unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange God of Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and saved the Lord. And they served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mespeh, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mespeh and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord, and Samuel judged the children of Israel in, in Mizpah. And when the Philistine heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in Mizpah, the lords of the Philistine went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. He's not a God of the world. This is our brethren in these scriptures that I'm reading. Talk to all of Israel, all of Israel. And Samuel took a certain lamb and offered it up for burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. For the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came on the bitter. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and called the name of Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto had the Lord helped us. 
My dear brethren, it's not my lesson. It's just a message that I want to give so that we would understand where we are and what we should do like our fathers before us in Mespa. My lesson today would be a very important one because we don't seem to understand what I was saying all the time. I hope today we will be very comfortable to understand that our culture, our very own culture, is very rich. And I want to show you how in the revelation in his holy name. Let's read Leviticus, the 22nd chapter. I'm going to read the 32nd verse, and it says, Neither shall he profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among children of Israel. I am the Lord which hallowed thee. Could you imagine the Lord that hallowed us? And yet what happened? We turned that hallow into Halloween. Rather than we understanding what it is, we have turned holiness Everything that God has created with his beauty, when we look up in the sky, it has all turned to something else. All we need to see is where we are going because we are so much involved in the life and in other man's culture. Hollow means holy. Hollow means the devil. Hollow is evil. Hollow is holy. In Ezekiel, we talk about his holy name. We can't even call it. We don't call it. So will I make, Ezekiel 29, the 10 verses, so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. He have not given the world his name. He has given us his name. Why are we afraid to call it? Why are we afraid to call upon his name? Why is it that we can't call on his name? And that's why I said before, we can't get along in a spiritual way. We should be able to get along politically and speak with one voice because, because we are so divided. Other nations can tell us what to do, can ask us to do the impossible, and we will try. I'm asking you, my dear friends, to just listen to me today. Call our number, call the Israelite nation. Someone will talk to you. Let's set up a time. Let's set up somewhere where we can get together and form a political body. I don't care what you say or you understand or reveal the Bible that you have, but if we can come together politically, we can do so much in this world. And that's why I'm appealing to you. I can't travel much, but with something like that, I would travel. I would go or I would ask that you come here to this building that the Israelite nation owned. Let us sit down together the way we were doing when we were in the slave ship. When we were hugging each other and wiping each other's eyes from the tears we cry. I'm just asking you to understand that. Leviticus the 19th chapter. He shall keep my Sabbaths. The 30th verse. And reference my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. We prefer in our own way. We prefer 
to work with the dead, to be wizards, to be voodoo priests, and obia men and women, rather than serve the true living God. The wickedness in ourselves dominates our own spirituality that we cannot move. This is a spiritual world. I'll tell you what it says. I tell you, the body is just a temple. The body is a house. The battle that we're fighting is not a physical one. Without the spirit within, the body is dead. So who are you fighting and what are you fighting? It's not the body fighting, it's the spirit. So we must learn how we go strengthen the spirit in us? Because we can't even understand Christ. We call him a dead man. And Christ is alive. It's so difficult because we are all into what the slave master gave us. Every day you can hear about it. Every day you hear about Jesus. And then you see an Italian man playing the role so nicely, and you believe it. You have him over your dinner table. I am begging you to understand that this is a spiritual battle. The man is dead. He gave up the ghost. It's a spirit within us that gives us the strength that we need to fight. Let me put it to you this way. When you're gone, some of you would die and some of us would be sleeping with our fathers. The body is no more. Just imagine this. The force that keeps you alive, the big, strong force, the spirit, went with you all the way to the cemetery. Put the body down. The spirit now answers for you. What are you going to say when they question the spirit? None of us knows what's going on on the side. We have an idea because it is written in the book of Luke. We have an idea. The spirit would suffer your pain would be everlasting. Think about it. Let's enrich our spirit and be strong in what the God of Israel want for us to do. Let us do this. John the 6th chapter and the 63rd verse says, it is the spirit that quickened the flesh, profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened the flesh, Prophet is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. The body is dead. We are a spiritual force and not using the spirit. We believe too much and so much in a body. I will tell you a story that has a lot of questions, but I'm going to tell it anyway. When I said that Jesus did not do anything, really, because it was the Spirit in him. And I'm going to go into that after I read a story that so many of us used to be reading in Sunday school. And as we read it, we hear what the pastor said. In the past, they had no knowledge of what he was saying. But they read the story. The story of this young woman. Remember, Jesus called a Greek woman a dog. And none of us in the old days could understand why this holy man called another human being 
a dog. Can I give my bread to dogs? The Christian turned that around and said, even though she was called a dog, she still took the crumbs. And so you should take the crumbs because they call you a Gentile. You are sitting along there, lapping up everything, and they're calling you a Gentile. A Gentile is a child of Japheth. Genesis 10. You cannot be a Gentile. It's another set of people. But anyhow, let me get into the story. I'm going to sleep tonight because I need to have that rest. So when the Spirit is telling me what I have to do, what I must do, I am standing here hoping that you will understand that we would somehow get together in the future. We would somehow get together in the future. And we would sit down around the table and we would talk with maturity and strength and intelligence and let the inspiration of our God be with us and we would form that body. And wherever we are, if anything should go wrong with us or anyone belittle us, we should be able to speak with one voice and say, you can't do that. We suffered during slavery. Why are we suffering now in terms of people telling us what to do? We're no longer coons. We're no longer Negroes. We're no longer blacks. We are the children of Jacob. We are Israelite. We are God's chosen people. Read it. It's in 66 books. But it's okay, Elder Chadrach. Let's just take our time and just read a story. It's in the book of Luke again. I think the Luke, the eighth chapter. And see if you remember the story. And then I'll tell you how the Christians, because the reason why I put the story here, because on my TV, I turned it off as soon as I saw what this man was saying about the story. They can't see because they don't know. In the 41st verse in Luke, the 8th chapter, and behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people turned him. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, now it could be healed of any. The man in the cloth was saying she had a blood disease. <laughs> I think because he was a man of cloth, he cannot understand a woman's sickness. And therefore, he could not understand this story because they're so very physical. They cannot understand. The fourth foot verse says, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stench. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and seest thou who touched me? 
If you understand the power of the Christ, that the Christ, I said, could not ever took a dead body after Jesus died. Neither can he appear anywhere unclean. But they can call you to be baptized when you're unclean. They can call you up to say they'll save you when you're unclean. That is all false. Because they're not worshiping the right God. They're worshiping their God can be worshipped at any time when you're unclean. That's the best time. But in Israel, we don't do that. You stay away when you're unclean. You cannot go to the altar. You cannot touch anything that's holy in here. Every brethren would have two Bibles, one clean and one unclean. When you're unclean, you can touch the unclean Bible. We know all this. So how would a Christian understand that? It says here, and he said, the, the, four, the, four, the four to six verse, and Jesus said, somebody had touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. He says, the power. The man of cloth says, the power left him. But what? What is the power? What was that power that left him? That's what is important. Because we need to understand it. It is so important that we understand these little things. They would say the power left him. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and fallen down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. That is the most important part of the scripture for all the Christians. That woman had faith. That woman had faith. That woman had faith. Of course, we are saved. By faith. You were saved by grace, through faith. So she had faith. She was healed immediately. And this is what happened here now. And he said unto her, daughter, not dark, daughter, we are a family brethren. Don't let us lose sight of that family. I can have the spirit of one of the people that's gone, and so can you. We are a family. We have to get together. We have to stand up. He called her, and he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy fate hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Because she was family. You can't take that literally to say that was his daughter. No. In the spirit, we are family. While he yet spake, they come at one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. This is what they would not understand. We have to take this in a human form. But I will tell you, as a spiritual person, how it worked. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. Why? He was the Michael Jackson. Everybody is following him. Boom. Then the unclean woman touched him. He was going to do a very powerful job. He said, don't worry, I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to do all this. And then the woman touched him. The unclean woman touched him. And they said, the power is gone. Yes, 
the Christ left because the Christ cannot abide with that. So the Christ left. He took James and John, Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. Now, why would he do something like this? He was going to show the whole crowd what he can do. But now, he took who? All the ones that was close to him, and the mother, and the father of the little girl, and all wept and bewildered her. But he said, weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. Because he called those who can bring back the strength of the Christ back to him. The crowd could not have done that. He became another man because now he would have to get the Christ back. And it's not an easy thing. He could not do that with all the crowd. He had to get the people who were close to him. He had to be a man again. The 53rd verse says, And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. Now, and he put them all out and took her by the hand and called. That is what we need to understand. And called, and saying, Maid, arise. And what happened? And her spirit came again. So you know it's a spiritual thing. It wasn't him. The spirit, the spirit, and the spirit came again, and she rose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And the parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should not tell no man what was done. He always says that, because who would understand? Who would understand? And I'll tell you about the man and how it all started. Because I have done it so many times, and it always appears as if I'm repeating myself. But I'm not. I just need for everyone that listens to my voice to understand. And every time, I'm going to give you all the details for you to understand. When I told you that Jesus was dead, I got an email that says he's not dead, he arose. How is that possible? And when they're sick and they pray to their Jesus, he says, oh, Jesus died for my sins. He died for your sins, yet when I tell you that he died, you just want to fight me. Because I said he is dead. But when you say he died for your sins, it's okay. What a world. We have to get together, my brethren. We have to be a people again that we be able to speak with one voice. In Matthew, the fourth chapter, this is what it says. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which mean, which being interpreted is God with us. So they said, Jesus is God. If they read John 1, they know that Jesus could never be God because the Christ was before Jesus. And Jesus was born because no one understood the Christ because they couldn't see him. He came to his own and his own received him not. He's a spirit. He walked around and no one can see him. Jesus had to be born so a face could be seen. I said this a million times. 
So he was born for that. So when they saw him, they said, it is the Christ. But he represented the Christ. When he was alive, he was Jesus the Christ. Because everyone knows that the Christ was coming for their people. Everyone knew that. Every single soul at that time. They would ask every person that says, God, are you the Christ? They would ask them, everybody, are you the Christ? Are you the Christ? So in that reason, go back and read the scriptures. And John 1 says, once. But I'm going to go again. Emmanuel means God is with us. Because the Christ, without him there was nothing made. John 1. Therefore, in Isaiah 7, it says the same thing. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So this was done in Isaiah 7. It's done in Isaiah 42. The behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted, I have put my spirit, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. My gosh, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. That's what's happening today. They do more than that. They took another one because it's easy for you to see. He shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Oh, no way. He shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. I rest my case. Again it says in Isaiah 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So what do you think is the government? It's the Christ. The government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. So they take all of this, and call Jesus a God. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It is so difficult to explain that. So very difficult for the world to explain it and to understand it. But we as Israelites, we know the power of the Spirit the body is nothing, absolutely nothing. And I've said it before and I'm saying it again. The spirit without the body could only die if the God of Israel killed it. But the body can die from disease. The spirit cannot feel the pain outside of the body. But when the spirit is in the body, it is the spirit that feels the pain and manifests through the body. That's why the Christ says, take this cup from me. Take away this flesh. The cup is the container. He was living in the container. Take it away from me. I don't know, but I'm saying it is so difficult. And I'm not going back to all the scriptures I read before in all the lessons that I did. I'm not going back to Hebrews 2, 9, and I'm going back to all of that. It's all on record. I'm finding more scriptures to show what you don't know. 
in Matthew the 16th chapter. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? <clears throat> now, if you be the Son of Man, I mean Jesus. But it's saying in there, Son of Man, am. Because he called himself the son of man because he came to his people to be like a man. That's why he had Jesus. That's why Paul, when he heard a voice in heaven, when he asked who, the voice said, it's me, Jesus, because Paul did not know anything about a Christ then. He had to be in the spirit to understand the Christ, like it says, in the book of Acts, the 17th chapter. But we're not going there. I'm saying, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So you know who's called, well, you don't know. So I'm telling you who's calling themselves the Son of Man. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some, Elias, and other Jeremiah's are one of the prophets. Now listen carefully. This is Jesus. He's right there in the flesh. Look how stupid people can be. He's right there in the flesh. Or uh, who do people say that I am? I'm Elder Shadrach. But well, why would they call all of those people that are probably dead and gone? Why are you calling those people that their spirit is in him because of what he's doing. They call it Jeremiah and the prophet and Elias. Why? We are not that smart to understand that. All we see is Jesus, the flesh. All we see is Jesus, the flesh, but he's asking his disciples. And they're not saying, oh, why are you asking me? You're Jesus. No. They're not saying that. Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and all of Jeremiah's are one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter, this is his best friend, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the son of the living God. John 1. He bears that spirit, the Christ. He is not the Christ, but who was asking the question? That is, Jesus was standing there and the Christ asked the question. And Peter, let's go back to see that. And Jesus and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh. Oh, goodness. Oof. I don't know what's the matter with the liars. They can see what's going on here. It says, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. If flesh and blood did that, I would have been Jesus. But it's your spirit that see. <sighs> for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, not Jesus' Father, the Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. As I said, I'm not reading all the scriptures I read before. I want for us to understand what is written here. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I would build my church. 
It's not a rock. Peter is not a rock. Is the solid statement. Is that statement that go out to Christ. I am going to build my church on that. That's where I'm going to build my church. Not a building. I'm going to put everything in that. The Christ. Pray to him. Understand him. Upon this rock. And I say unto thee that thou art preaching upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell. Oh, goodness. Just give me a little break here, please. Just a little bit. Yes. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do we understand that? This is a powerful spiritual statement that we are not understanding. We follow People are reading our Bible and teaching something else, and you believe in it. Listen to an Israelite. This is what an Israelite teaches. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. No one can get that unless you build your church upon that rock, upon that spirit of truth. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth. Now you're talking about power. Let's go back and be together and have this type of a power. Our fathers had it. Why are we losing it by going and serving the devil? We're going and serving Lucifer's people. The 28 verses. Then charge he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Now you understand. Now you can reveal. After all of that was done with Peter, he bring in the word Jesus right now because the others don't seem to get everything that your elder is telling you now. They didn't seem to get everything. So now you heard what I said to Peter. Flesh and blood did not do this. This is a powerful spiritual understanding. It comes from above. What is bound there is bound on earth. But to you, I'll tell you, is Jesus the Christ. Because Jesus was alive. And there he is walking because it's the spirit that's making him walk. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So they read that, and this is where they get it from. But look who is going to betray him. Let's go that again. We can't do this again, my brethren. We can't do this again. Fellow children of Jacob, we can't do this again. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So here you go. Jesus did not raise, but the Bible is very, very clear here. He said, but that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples, not Christ. Because Christ is in him because that's what he told his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus, the Christ. So now he was telling them that he had to die, that Jesus would die, but he would not 
raised again from the dead because it was not Jesus that was talking. Ha! <sighs> then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Why? Saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Peter, the one who knew that he was Christ, talking unto him, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me. He is hiding him behind him now. Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. The battle is not about Jesus. Jesus is like the Trojan horse. <laughs> is what was inside Jesus. And Satan is not somebody that you pray with. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I want to read that to you. What I'm doing here today, and I'm going to repeat it, this is the cross. What I'm saying to you is the cross, and I'm picking it up, and I'm sharing it with you. It's burdensome. Can you see your brethren being betrayed by his own brethren? Could you not see that he knows he's going to be suffering? There's a pain before the suffering. You're going to electric chair on the fifth. Today is the fourth. You get up in the morning on the fifth. That is painful. You ain't going to the chair yet. But that is the pain. So the spirit knows then now. The spirit knows I'm going to Jerusalem on my own people. It's going to kill me. I know a lot about that. My own people, loved ones, tried to kill me. Had I not have this God with me? Tried to turn me into a vegetable or something. But my God is so good to me because I picked up my cross and not two pieces of wood. I said it before. If you like to wear a cross on your neck, you can wear a gun too. Because they both kill. And if a gun kills your loved one, then wear a gun too. If you're going to wear a cross, because your Lord died on it. <laughs> could you believe that people could be that dumb? Who forever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. I did not lose my life, but I was willing to lose my life for his sake. For what is a man profited if he shall gain a whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You don't know. You don't know. And as a messenger of the truth, I tell you, there's the spirit going to suffer. The body is dung in the dirt, food for the worms. But you're still alive. And you've been so wicked in your life. The body is gone. You have to face it now. You have to fare and walk the streets and go through hell. Because it's the spirit that did all this wickedness. Think about it. The body is no more. But you are still there because your spirit can only be killed by the God of Israel. And he is not going to kill it when he said you shall surely die is if it means that while we sleep, you're going to be walking the streets because 
It is your spirit and your soul that's going to pay. They'll be kneading and gnashing of teeth. So what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. For the Son of Man again shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Hebrews 1 tell you that Christ had power over his angels. And Hebrew 2 tells you that Jesus was made Lord and the angels. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. I'm waiting, my Father. I'm waiting because I know the day will come when I sleep with my fathers. And I want to show because I need to read this again for you to see what is written there is not for you to believe because you have not been given the eyes to see nor the ears to hear. And because of that, I have to tell you. I have to tell you that the Son of Man descended and the Son of Man ascended. Again, I would read what it says, Ephesians 4. But on every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Listen, he's gone now. Huh? For unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? What is it? But that he also descended First, he also descended first unto the low parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. I am not finished with Jesus. My lesson today is not an easy one. Remember what I said first when I stood up here with the strength that the God of Israel had given me. When I stayed and I told you that the Spirit wants me and wants all of us that came out from the great hall, the woman in purple, who sits upon many waters, and above all kings of the earth, a very powerful woman, drunk with a wine, that we, the children of the living God, the children of the living God should come home. We can't get along spiritually. We can't. So I'm going to put aside all the spiritual things. Don't believe what I'm saying. But sit down with me. And we would reason together. If you don't know about politics, 
I have an idea. I've been a politician. Secretly, no one knew that. I work with one of the greatest prime ministers in my country. On a little bit with my president. I was trained by them. Secretly when no one knows. I went to political school and I understand. And I hear words from my prime minister and other things that he would say when he's informal. But he's a very tough man. So when he's informal, he makes a lot of sense. Sometimes even much more than when he's formal. And some of the things I said it here, and it happened. When you get together as a people, be aware that the black man cannot get together without fighting each other. Everyone wants to control. He said that. And when I formed this nation and gave people to be ministers and elders, I saw the same. A lot of people can get together with trust. We can't. We're still struggling with that idea. We're still struggling to understand why not? Why can't we get together and do important things? When we were Christians, every storefront, a black man is a reverend. Why would he call himself a reverend? like the slave master tell him to do when he went to his shrine. Reverend, the name reverend belongs to God. It says in Psalms 111, holy and reverend is his name. Yet they give themselves that name, so they become gods. I want for us in this day this is the time of darkness. This is when the devil is busy. So let's try to stop him in his tracks. If we get together, the world will be astonished. So let us try to do it and let the world be astonished. Let us get together. I don't care about your philosophy. I don't care about what you believe. But I care because you're my brother. You, my sister, come together and let wipe each other's eyes and let the tears be a joy of tomorrow. My message would continue to be togetherness, unity that gives us spiritual strength. And maybe one day, when we're together, we will all understand and be with one doctrine, as one people, to find our way back to our Father, to be like the whole house of Israel. Then come a Jesus from Galilee, in Matthew, the third chapter to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? Some said, it was Jesus. But, and Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it cometh, at, it cometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight to the water, and, lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw, John saw, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Remember, he came down so he could go up. John 3, 13 says, 
If you never came down, you could never go up. And yet the Christian dogs are going up, and you believe in that. You want to go to heaven. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. It means that that's his favorite. This man is coming down now. And he's going to take that body that was prepared that Simeon saw in Luke 2. Simeon saw him before he died, and Simeon was led by the Spirit. It wasn't Simeon. It was the Spirit that led him so that it could be Spirit to Spirit. So the Spirit saw him, and the Spirit revealed what this baby is going to be. Why he was born. He was born just so that he can take on that powerful, mighty God, the forgotten son of the living God. Because I'm going to remind you, as it said, and no man has to send it up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven, is John 3, the 13th chapter. It's John 3 th and 13th verse. I said it. That's the way it is. Matthew, the 12th chapter. Today is one hell of a day because it's painful. I've seen what's been happening on television. I've seen how our people have to be feebled when one with a strong voice representing another people telling them what to do. You have to be feeble. Why we, the children of Shem, have to go through all this? We should have been respected. We are the older brother. It was Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But now the little brother is in power over us. And we can't see it. I said it the last time I was here. All of Europe are together, ready to fight the entire world if it comes against it. No one else stand a chance. And these people, are, they prefer to die. You got all of Africa. They're fighting each other. <laughs> they have not one nuclear nation in Africa. But when the Gentiles had South Africa, they were coming so close to getting it. All of the Caribbean. We don't have no power structure there. They have everything. But most of them are all know by the Chinese. What's the matter with us? I'm not talking so much about Africa now. I'm talking about the Caribbean because the Caribbean and Brazil, and South America and Guyana, they're all a part of the children of slavery. But they mix with other people and everywhere they are among other people, the other people have no respect for them. And they have no idea how to get their strength of power. They're just being feebled again. Matthew 10. The 17 verse says, But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scrooge you in their synagogue. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Again, the people from Europe and the people that are controlling the economy of the world, and even though we have the resources, they control the economy. But when they deliver you up, take no thought 
how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Oh Lord, have mercy. It is the spirit of my Father that speaketh in me. It says in John 16, 10 verse, of righteousness because I go to my Father, and he see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, which is the comforter, he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall, he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. My dear brethren, it's supposed to be a nice day where the weather is concerned. But my message, I hope, it goes to the right ears. That everyone that hear my voice today, with all the things that I'm reading, and I'm talking to you, that you would understand exactly what I'm saying. And all that I'm saying today is that we need a togetherness we had in the belly of the ship. When we lean on each other, we pee and poo on each other, and we did not complain about each other. We come together to fight the enemy. Even if we lost, we saw victory in our face, that at least we tried. Come home with me, brethren. If you have dropped everything that a slave master gave unto you, you are ready to come home. Once you call yourself a child of Jacob, you are ready to come home. We need one voice. It does not have to be my voice. But you could be trained so that when you speak, the world would know and acknowledge and understand when you use and utter the words of our God. When you stop others from telling us what to do, put our face in the corner like you are a child. We need each other, brethren. We need each other now and forever. We shouldn't stop the 400 years are gone. It is time for us to come home. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and the sons with him from among the children of Israel that ye may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eliezer, and Lema, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. My dear brethren, we have the blood of Aaron. We have what it takes so I'm asking you today, as I spent this hour with you, maybe more, so that we can be as a people once more. I ask you 
to replay this lesson that I did and think about it. Let me get your email. Let us talk as if though we know what we want together as a people. Look at what others are doing. Pay attention to where we are, the bottom of the ladder. The God of Israel did not mean that this should happen to us. But it says in the book of Deuteronomy, if you turn to him, he would help you. And if you do the things contrary, you'll be cursed. Let's wipe away that curse, my brethren, and come together as a people. I know that I love you all, and I'll be waiting for your letter. May the Lord God of my fathers, may the Lord God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob be with us all today. And let us try from now on to be men. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to all of you. Listen to Elder Shadrach, and remember this day that I'm talking to you. Remember this day. Remember what I'm about to say now. The Gentile Christian took one word, one single word, from the Israelite doctrine that appeared only three times in a derogatory manner and used it to teach you about his doctrine from our book. I'm telling you now that you believe that you're a servant of God if you want to be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian if you were a child of God. If you say you're a Christian and you want to be a Christian, you would never be a servant of God. You'll be a servant of the slave master. We are not Christians. The Bible says we're Israelite. From Genesis to Revelation, come out of her, my people. God be merciful unto us and bless us, cause his face to shine upon us. Salaam, let thy ways be known upon earth forever. Thy saving help among
him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry heart. Praise him with the timbrel of dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. God, my deliverer, praise him, praise him, oh my Father in whom I trust, praise him, praise him, I exalt thee and lift your name, oh God, praise him, praise and for thy goodness and mercy we bless thee, who is like him in all the earth, for his mercy endureth forever. In the ways of the Lord For in them do we take it this pleasure As I walk through the valley He's by my side Every step that I take Every day, every night Lord, I give my best to you All of my sins confess to you King of it. 